Hey guys, welcome back to the Thermal Engine 4 tutorial. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to save and load your current level that you're playing on. So we're going to be adding a save and load feature, and this is going to be able to load the level that you're on. So if you have a lot of levels, like if you're playing Mario or something, you have a lot of levels in there, you want to save which one the player was last on, so that they can then load that when they next play the game. I'm going to show you how to do that today. So I'll give you a quick example here. So you can see I'm in this level. If I hit 1, which is my save button, that's then saved in this level. If I then press 9, which is just my quick way of getting to another level, just to test it out, you can see we're in here. If I press 2, which is load, we're going to go back here. If I then go back to this level, press 1, so save again, go back to my level here. If I press 2, we're going to load back to this level. So you can see we're going to be able to save which level we are on and then load that as well. So I'll get rid of this code and I'll show you how to do this now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually create our save game object. So to do that, what we're going to do is simply just right click, go to blueprint class, and then under all classes here, you can open this drop down menu and I'm just going to search for save game. And we're going to get this save game object here, hit select so we can get it in. I'm going to name this one game save one. You can name this absolutely whatever you like, just make sure it is not game save. So don't do it as that, put something at the end or give it something different. Otherwise that will then confuse you later on as there is something else we need with that name. So once you've done that, you're going to open it up straight away. And in here, this is where you then basically save everything that you want. So if you wanted to keep track of the amount of jumps, the amount of distance traveled, items they have, anything like that, you'd put it in this save game. But today, all I'm going to do is get their level name. So I'm going to hit the plus variable here, call this one level name. And then I'm going to change this variable from a boolean to a string. So it's a string of letters and numbers so we can get the name of the level. Compile, save. And that is all we need to do in there so you can close it straight away then what we want to do is we want to get the place where you're going to be able to save so if you want this to be on a button press in a menu you can do this the exact same way just do it on the on clicked event instead of this so open that widget if you want but for me i'm going to do it in my character blueprint so it's third person bp blueprints third person character and once i'm in here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to find some space so i'm going to go down here and then i'm going to right click and i'm just going to get the one keyboard event as that is how i want to save it Again, you can set this to be whatever you like, or you can do it in a widget, so when you press a button on screen, but I'm gonna do it this way. You do the exact same code, you just go off the unclicked event from the button instead. But I will show you later on how to load it from the main menu. So once you've got that, we're gonna come out of the pressed event here, and we're going to get a does save game exist. This slot name here, we can set to anything we want, but we're gonna get multiple references to this. So to make our lives easier, what I'm gonna do is just right click on this and promote to variable and call this slot name and then we can just put that there and then if we compile this we can change its default value here and the reason why we're doing this is because then if we have multiple references to this they need to be the exact same name each time so if we just change this variable here it's going to change all of them to be the exact same so it just makes it a lot easier for us so then in here you can again name this whatever you like just make sure it's not the same name as this save game we made earlier so i called my game save one just give it a different name so i'm going to call this one save game one now you might want to give these better names for you so if this is just a level call it level game save or save level something like that but this is going to work for me i'm going to compile and save that out of this you can see that the return value is red as it is then a boolean so we're going to hold down b left click to get a branch plug the condition of that return value in there the execution in there like so so basically if the game save does exist or if the game save doesn't exist so if it does exist what we want to do is we want to load game from slot so come out of true and load game from slot again here this is where we got this slot name so just plug that variable in there like so then if it doesn't exist or so for false what we want to do is we want to create save game object so create save game object like that the save game class is going to be our game save that we made so i called mine game save one and that is this here so just put that in the class there and then what we want to do is we want to create a save a subclass so what i'm going to do is i'm going to compile i'm going to right click on this return value here promote to variable and i'm just going to call this saver subclass like so and that you can see is the save game object and this is why we gave the other one a different name from save game because if you were just making this you need to get the save game object reference but obviously if we called that one save game then there'd be two and you wouldn't know which one's which so we can do that and then what i'm going to do is do the same for the create save game object but i'm just going to drag and drop the one that we made earlier onto there and could you set plug that in there like so so we are now setting the saver subclass on both of these like that. So then out of this, what we're going to do is we're going to come out of the return value of that set and we're going to cast to our save game. So mine was cast to game save one. So again, that will be whatever you named it. It is basically this that we made earlier. Go back here and I'm just going to duplicate that 
as I want to do it off of both of these. And we're doing the same code, but we can't join them because these return values only go into one thing. So obviously we want to have multiple as they want to have their own independent return value lines like so. So out of this, what I'm gonna do is as game save one, I'm going to set level name like so. I'm not gonna plug that in anywhere, just get it like that. Again, duplicate it to plug it down here. So set level name like that. But how are we actually gonna be able to get the level name that we're on? There's a very simple node for this, which will help us out a lot. We just come out the executable there and we're going to get current level name. So it's literally just going to do it for us. It's going to get the name of the level that we're in. Plug the return value in there and the execution in there. Again, do the same thing down here. So it was going to get the current level name and then set it to be our string for level name in our save game, meaning we can then save this later. Meaning we can then save this and load it later on. So then after this, what we've done is we've actually set this string, but we need to be able to save it as well. So to be able to actually save this string in there, all we're going to do is very simply just come out of this and we're going to save game to slot. This one we can plug both the executables in there like so. Slot name is obviously our slot name string we made earlier. Save game object is our save a subclass there like so. So now what we're doing is we're going to be getting the current level name, setting it to be our level name string we made in our save game object, and then we're going to save that game to slot. So now what we've done is we've created it so we can actually save the current level that we are on. So we've saved it. Now we need to load it. And so this is also very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this, comment it, and call save game or save current level. And then since I did this off of one, I'm going to load on two. I'm going to right click down here just underneath it and get the two keyboard event like so. Out of the pressed of this, I'm again going to get a does save game exist, but the slot name is the exact same slot name up here like so. Again, get a branch to plug into the return value there. So if the save game does exist, if it does exist, what I want to do is load game from slot with that slot name in there again, like so. Return value is again going to be just setting our saver subclass like that. So it's very similar to what we did here, but we're just loading it instead of saving it, which again is similar to this, but this is loading to then save the new one. This is loading to load the level. Off of false, so if the save game doesn't exist, we just want to open up our first level. So we're going to open level like so, level name, it's just going to be your first level that you want the player to start on. So for me, that's just going to be the third person example map. Again, making sure that everything in these is spelt correctly. So then after the code up here for set saver subclass, what we're going to do is again, cast to our save game. So game save one for me. As game save one, I want to get the level name this time, not set, but get level name. And then I'm going to come out of the cast for the executable there. I'm just going to open level, open level like that. And if we just plug in the level name into there, so level name goes into level name, it's going to convert the string to a name value, and then that will work perfectly, it's going to open up that correct level for us. So then we compile, save, that's going to work. So now if I'm going to comment this as well, so select, press C, load current level, that makes sense for me, compile, save, and this should work. And then over here as well, I've just got the code for opening the two different levels I have, just to test this. So if I minimize this, hit play, you can see that if I press two, it's going to load this level as what it's doing, is it's going to be getting this value here. So if a slot name doesn't exist, it's going to open this default level. So if I travel to my other level, just to show you, so level one, save all this. And then if I press two again to load, it should load up this one as that's going to be my default level for it to load. So you can see that works perfectly. However, if I was in level one here and I press one to save it, press two, it's going to take us there as that's what it's loading. So then if I go back over to the first level here, so the person example map, so like so, and then if I go in here, press two to load again, it's gonna take me over here. So it's transported me to the last level that I saved at. So I try that again. So if I'm now in this level, I hit one to save, and then I go back over here. So, sorry, then I press nine to go here. If I press two, I'm gonna load back here. So we are saving the current level we're on and then loading it as well, and this works perfectly. So now the final thing I'll do is I'll show you how to load this off of the main menu. So I made a main menu in a previous tutorial, which you can watch now, be on the screen now, and I'll show you how to quickly load this here as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up that widget that I made, so main menu, main menu widget. Go over to the graph here and find the on-clicked start button event that we have here. All I'm gonna do is move the open level out. And so this bit here is as well, just gonna be creating a loading screen, which I also made in a previous tutorial, but you don't need that. If you don't want, that won't stop this from working. So a very quick way of doing this is go back to our character here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this load current level. So you get the does save game exist and load to load all level. Control C on that, Control V in here, 
to paste it and just plug this in like so. Move the open level over here, actually delete that one as we have this down here. And then what I need to do is we see we have this string here, but it's grayed out. That's because we don't have it in this widget. So I'm gonna hit the plus variable, call this slot name like so, and make this a string. Change variable type as it's done that. Close it, compile, and this should work like so. We need to actually put the slot name back in here again. So that was just double check down here, save game one. So we put in save game one, and then we also need to make the saver subclass as well. So we hit the plus variable, saver subclass, make this one a save game object reference like that. Change variable type, close, compile, and now this should work perfectly for us. So if we open up our main menu widget as well, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up this one, save this, so now we should open up in level one, as that's what I've just saved. And if we open up that map, so the main menu, so now we should load up into the main menu like so, if I hit start, we get the loading screen, and then we open up into level one, like so, as that is where we last saved. Now, if I go back in here, sorry, so I do this, go to the third person example map, press one to save again, go back to the main menu, press start, we're gonna load up and open up into this level here, as that is where I last saved. So that works perfectly, so I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we wanted to do. We set it up so that we can save and load between different levels, like so, so if I save here, over here, press two, we can load this. If I go back over here, save it, and go back to this level, and load, we're gonna go back to this level here. So we can save and load between different levels, and this will work perfectly for you as well. And we've also set it up so that we can load it from the main menu, like so, and you can also save this from like a pause menu or anything like that, very simply as well. You do the exact same code that we did, just obviously in a widget like we did here. So you go off of the on clicked button and do this code here. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.